Now, I'm going to show you how to tie this this pattern here, or this style of fly. This is a, a what I call the CDC hopper. Now, this fly is very good as a dry fly itself, as well. You can actually pull it because of the deer hair. Um, you can actually get a bit of weight behind this fly, as well as you can fish it in the the surface film. I mean, hanging it sits well like a. An emerger style fly or even wet because once I put this say in a windy day it will sit it's got a lot of movement in the fly because of the CDC so that's what makes it a good all round pattern or style now the colours could be whatever colour combination you want I'm tying the claret one at the moment uh, you could be like a bright orange like carrot fly it could be uh, sort of red hairs here Obviously black's a good colour, fiery brown, the list goes on and on. So in this style you can tie it in any colours. So but this one I'm gonna use the uni thread 80 in this case, which is a wine, it's a nice clarity colour. It suits the fly obviously. The hook choice again it can be up to yourself, but the one I'm using is the full and mill all purpose medium wire hook. And this is a 10. The two sizes I'm gonna be tying is 10s and 12s. So we start at the eye. We work our way down and remove the waist piece. Now I'm going to tie in a medium sort of tinsel. This is a pearl. Now you could use a small if you want. I just like the medium, it's just I want it to sit into the dubbing when it's on the body. So on the way down we tie it in, much easier to tie it in like this. Tie it to basically between the point and the barb of the hook. And then get your dubbing. Dubbing can be, in this case, this is seals for dyed claret. It could be SLF, anything that you've got, mohair or something like that. Now, I'm just going to lightly dub it onto the thread. I don't use wax to aid the, this, I mean, it, so I can slide up and down the wax will cause it to stick. Uh, if I want to tighten up, I can basically, once I've got it anchored, I can pull it tighter if I want. I want this reasonably loose, the dubbing, so that the, the rib can sit into it. Come up to this point here, and then I'm going to bring the pearl rib through, maybe about four turns or so. Nice and tight, tight in. Show away the waist. Now, to help protect the rib, what I like to do is to brush back seals fur with the velcro and then I'm going to take out, pull it, shorten some of the fibres and then roll it between my fingers so it lays back and this here will hold to so help to stop the fish's teeth getting into the rib and gives it a lovely look as well, a more natural look to it. I'm going to back to the dubbing and I'm going to sort of form like a collar of the seals fur just want some longer fibres in, so dub it onto your thread and quite loose like, just wind through itself so you can form like a ball and then obviously some seals for going forward here, just draw it back lock it, lock it back with two or three turns now what I like to do is get the velcro again and then just basically touch the stubbing with the, the velcro, lifting it out basically like a hair and then it's all on top, not underneath, just on the top. Just draw it back with your fingers. Gives it a very leggy light -like look and uh, just more natural again. This helps to float the fly. So it does, makes it much better. Now, legs, it's going to use a natural pheasant tail, fibre knotted, it's a cock pheasant tail. Now, I've knotted these myself. I want the knot quite close to the, the point of the fibre. Now six in this size. There's a broken one there, so I'm just gonna make sure I've got the six there. Just bring them 90 degrees from the stem of the feather. This will line them up and tear them away. And then what I'm gonna do here is obviously remove the broken one. And then put three legs down either side of the hook. 
Now you could tie these underneath if you want, it's entirely up to yourself. Some guys, some people like that. But I'm going to put three either side. Length, the legs by the, the bend of the hook about the body length. Just hold it. Three or four turns in there. Get your length, so you have a look, see the length that you like. Let's check the length of the legs, that's fine. If you're happy with that, then we can trim away. Trim the tidy this area up. There we are. It's okay. Now I'm going to wind the CDC feather. Now I keep the small feathers for doing this. This is obviously dyed claret. Now you can use the natural if you want. It works just so. I'm just going to basically tighten at the tip. So reveal the tip of the CDC feather. When two or three turns and draw back the tip, fold it back. Now, just leave that, it's not going to make any difference to the fly. You can trim it away if you want, but it doesn't make any difference. And then with the front of the hackle, we can wind towards the eye, just forming the CDC hackle. And we just keep try and get the, the smaller feathers. If the stems are much thinner, it makes it easier to wind this on. Once you're happy, I mean I'm coming right up towards the eye here, we can come in, make a space for your thread to come through and catch in the stem. A good four or five turns to secure, and then a nice sharp pair of cells come in and trim away the waste. Now a wee bit of wax on your thread. Anything going forward, we can draw this back, tidy the head area up. And there we are. Now, you could fish that partly like that. But I'm going to put some deer hair on top. Now, you could use natural deer hair or dyed. Now, I'm using some dyed roe deer. This is dyed uh, cinnamon. A nice cinnamon, so it's a lovely colour. This is a darker piece. Now, you can get the lighter bits, but this is a darker piece. The darker piece of the deer hair is usually from the, the ridge of the back of the, the deer hair. The lighter stuff is on the belly, slightly round. Now this is in place of the, the bin, not a hen or a cock hackle, depending on the style you're tying, but normally with a hop it would be a cock hackle tied in front. And a lot of people will trim it underneath, so this replaces that. So this would give the impression of the, the legs or the, the hackle of the fly. Length, you don't want it long. You can have it long if you wish, like a wing length. I want it hackle length, which is about half half of that, say about halfway into the body, on the top. And then we can come in with a turn nice and tight, keep the thread tight, and then get the cut ends and wind through them, just pulling some of them back and doing a turn. Another one, another one, till you get to the, the eye of the hook. Just keep going. Three or four turns. Keeping the thread always tight, go straight in and wet finish. Trim away your thread. Now we've got our cut ends here, just have to lift them out. And then we're going to cut these at a slight angle. I'm just going to follow the angle that's at the same angle as the eye. So I'll come underneath, come up short, not long. And then I just press it with my finger. And there we are. Now, you could trim away some of the CDC underneath if you want. And you could shorten the length of the fibre if you do it too. But once this hits the surface or lies, lays on the surface of the water, it will lift, because it's soft, it lifts up and gives a nice presentation or imprint on the water which you're looking for. As I say, you can pull the fly. Uh, there's a lot of movement in, in this as well. Uh, and you can let it hang if you wish. So that's a good all-round pattern. And then all we have to do to finish it off, some super glue, uh, sorry, varnish. Underneath, make sure it's all the way around. Get your dubbing needle, or whatever, and take away the excess. Make sure the eye's clean. And there we are. And that's your CDC.
Hopper, uh, or the Clara version anyway. As I say, as many colours you could use, and good wee pattern. So I hope you enjoyed that. Mm -hmm.